All right, what's going on everybody? Today we have a 2014 Kia Rio. Uh, customer complaint is a check engine light, um, extended crank, it's hard to start. Uh, the RPM gauge is intermittently cutting in and out. Uh, sometimes it stalls and sometimes it's a crank no start. Uh, so let's go ahead and get a scanner hooked up here and see what we got going on. All right, so let's go ahead and get our scanner loaded up here. Twenty fourteen Curio, okay. All right, we'll go into engine module codes. All right, it looks like we have two codes here: P zero three three five crank position sensor A circuit, and P zero one three zero. That would explain the symptoms, the crankshaft uh, sensor code here. So I said, let's go ahead and get the uh, scope. Uh, hooked up to the crank sensor and see what kind of signal we get out of it. Alright, we'll go ahead and select engine, crank sensor, and then it's going to have two options with idle, stop, go, or without. Um, ours is without. The difference between the two, the crank sensors, the uh, with idle, stop, go will be a three wire sensor, without will be a two wire. All right, let's go ahead and go to signature test here. And you can see we have a two uh, pin connector. We're gonna go right to the sensor. Uh, the wire color is white. That'll be our sensor ground, and our brown will be our sensor signal. So let's get hooked up, uh, back probed into that connector. All right, and there's our connector for the crankshaft position sensor. Uh, went ahead and got us two back probes in there. Um, we got our leads right up here, so we'll go ahead and get these set up on the scope. We got our white wire going to black here for ground. And then our yellow wire, which is actually a brown wire. But our yellow lead here is gonna be our signal. Let's go ahead and pull up our meter. All right, so let's go ahead and go inside the vehicle here. Try to turn this over, see if it'll start. Okay, that time not so bad. Started up pretty good. And then you'll see here we do have A waveform going. All right, we'll add on peak detect, and then we'll just let this go. What we're looking for is any dropouts on the screen here, uh, any anomalies. All right, and this started to run a little rough and we lost our signal here. So let's uh, stop the screen here. Let's go back and see if we can see what happened. All right, you can see our signal here started to drop out on us and it picked back up. And then if we move another frame forward, uh, it was gone again. And exactly when that happened, we also noticed we had a hard start. So let's go ahead and try to start this over again. Very extended crank. All right, so it was able to start back up, but you can see our crank signal is gone. Uh, the only thing I'd really like to do is check this ground, make sure it can hold a load. And if it is, I said we'll go ahead and replace the sensor. All right, we'll just use a test light from battery positive to the uh, ground here. And you see it's lit. Uh, nice and bright. So let's go ahead and replace the sensor. All right, so we're gonna want to go ahead and get this connector unplugged here um, that we were back probed into, and then we'll go underneath the vehicle and uh, take it out the rest of the way. So we go 
ahead and pull these off to the side here. All right, we'll go ahead and get our sensor disconnected. All right, then we'll go ahead and follow this harness down uh, directly to the crank sensor. So just to give you an idea, there's your oil filter right there. Um, just up and to the right, there's the crank sensor. It's going to be a 10 millimeter bolt. Uh, let's go ahead and get that taken out. So go ahead and take your bolt out, and then we'll just kind of wiggle this back and forth. Crank sensor here. There we go. And we'll pull it straight out. All right, so we've got our new sensor here. We do have a uh, standard T-Series, part number PC934T. Go ahead and get this opened up. Make sure it all matches up good. All right. So everything looks good here, connectors are the same, uh, sensors the same length, so uh, let's go ahead and get this installed. Alright, make sure it's seated all the way in, uh, you don't want to bind it up or anything like that, then you have an air gap issue between the sensor and the reluctor wheel. All right, so we'll go ahead and get this bolt tightened down and our connector back in. And then uh, we'll be ready to start it up and do our test. All right, so let's go ahead and get it plugged back up and we'll move back around to the top. All right, so we got our sensor reconnected. Uh, went ahead and put our back probes back into the connector. Let's go ahead and start this up and uh, see what we're looking like. Definitely starts a whole lot better. RPM gauge is definitely working. All right, you see we have a nice good signal. Start it right up. All right, let's go ahead and go back into our engine module here. Uh, we'll go into codes. And as of right now, both codes have moved to history codes. So we'll go ahead and clear these out and we'll take it for a drive. All right. And if all is well, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching.